Hello. Each week for the next 26 weeks, I'm going to be visiting different places around the country uh, to take a look at and see how to take care of some of the various birds, animals and reptiles that people like to keep as pets. Uh, we'll be looking at pit ponies, cockatoos, snakes, all sorts of strange animals. But I thought, as it's the first programme, we should start off with a real favourite, and that's kittens. And to tell us all about them is David Wilkins, who's the Deputy Chief Veterinary Officer of the RSPCA, and we're at the Millbrook Animal Centre at Chobham in Surrey. David, welcome to the programme. Thank you, um, Cats and kittens. Should we go for a cat or should we go for a kitten? Well, that's a personal choice, obviously. It's nice to be able to, to bring a kitten up through its growing period and become an adult, but at the same time, there are an awful lot of adult cats which do need homes for various reasons. It's a, it's a fact that we overproduce cats in this country and adult cats do make good pets. So we'll be seeing some of the, the cats that you've got here at the centre a little bit later oh, on. Oh yes, there's, there's a and lot of them And most of them are adult, pet, uh, adult cats, aren't they? Well, we get a large number of kittens as well, but equally the heartbreaking side of our work is the number of adult cats which come in for rehoming. And some of these are very young. They aren't kittens, but they're young adults. Uh, and it's very difficult to find homes. So if anybody is thinking about a cat or kitten and thinks, well, I would quite like to have a slightly older than a kitten, than a, but, a, but not quite an adult cat, please think about it and come here, because we can help them. David, these are rather grand cat houses. Will we leave one of these to keep a cat at home? Oh, no, these are for our specific requirements. We have to keep a lot of cats. We have to keep them free of disease. They've got to have warmth and shelter, and they've got to have an area to exercise in. Is that why they're kept separately, for, for disease? Oh, yes. This air space between them allows the coughs and sneezes, which cats often get, to, to avoid them being spread from one cat to another, because this is a common hazard whenever you're keeping cats in any sort of uh, major unit. He's a friendly one, isn't he? Oh, now, this is, this is a classical example of what I was saying about uh, giving a home to an adult cat. Now, this is a female tortoiseshell of a colour. You can see this very attractive uh, speckled effect of, of black and brown and white. And this little female is only a year old. You can see she's prepared to give you any amount of affection you want and would actually settle into a new home with no problem at all. In fact, I, I believe that cats settle into new homes as adults better than dogs do. Certainly, we, we seldom, if ever, get them returned because they don't settle down or they're unhappy for one reason or another. And she is a classic example. If you, if you go for a cat, though, that's one year old, of course, you miss the fun of having a kitten. This is true, and, and I wouldn't necessarily stop anybody from getting a kitten because there's a great deal you can learn about rearing a kitten. But as you can see for yourself, you can get a, a terrific kick and a terrific reward from taking uh, an adult of this type and bring it into a home, seeing it settle down and seeing it return the affection <laughs> which you must give the cat, um, the cat itself will return in, in, in double measure. He's a smashing little ginger moggy. How old is he, David? Uh, he? he? Well, she, in fact, <laughs> you're quite right, is about the same age as the other one, namely about a year old, and gives you a very fine example of the ginger colouring, which is another of the, the common colourings that you get in uh, uh, mongrel or, or moggy cats. And, of course, you get this white splash on the feet and under the chin, which makes it very attractive. And, again, you can see that the cat is very affectionate, looking to, to greet you, no question of running away or being nervous, uh, and obviously is again looking to go into a nice home where it will settle down. It's lovely and warm in here, especially for these kittens we've got with us. Um, yes. How, how do we decide whether to go for a cat or a kitten, David? Well, that decision is perhaps the most important one. We've obviously seen a few adults outside, and now we can see some kittens. Um, and one of the most imp important questions to think about is your own home and your own family. Because when you talk about a kitten, you're talking about a, a, an animal for, for, that for several months will be very demanding. It will need to be fed quite frequently, it will need to be looked after, it can get into difficult scrapes within the house. In other words, you have really got to have someone in the house all day long whilst the kitten is going through the growing up stage. 
Now, obviously, that means if mum and dad go out to work and you are at school all day, then this is not a very satisfactory situation for a kitten. So if that is the situation in your house, then perhaps you should be thinking of one of those adults or those one-year-old cats outside, which can fit into a household and although need, if you like, as much affection, they don't need the hour-to-hour -hour supervision that a kitten requires. So if we, if we do decide then we can cope with a kitten, uh, where should we get one from? Well, the best thing in principle is to try and go to the place where the kitten was born. Um, now, obviously, in our situation, we've been having to find homes for kittens from people who've abandoned their female cats, which are pregnant. But so, if you want to go to uh, a person who's bred a litter, then how do you find out? Well, one way is to look in your local papers. They, people who breed litters of kittens advertise, and there are kittens for sale. Secondly, you could phone your local RSPCA inspector, or even your local veterinary surgeon, because people phone him up and say, I have some kittens please, can you find homes for them? And in this way, you can get hold of uh, a name and address in your local area, and off you go. And then, of course, you, you get to see the litter. And this, in fact, is all one litter, although you've got two black and white kittens here and you've got a, a tabby here. Uh, it all comes from the same litter. So I if you aren't decided when you go to look for a kitten as to which colour you like, don't worry, when you get to that litter, you may well find uh, a mixture of long-haired, short-haired, tabby, black and white, ginger, what have you. He's certainly and the healthiest, isn't he? He's the uh, most lively. Well, you I always mean, find the one lively, which is the yeah. most lively, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, what, what should we look for from a health point of view? So, well, I mean, obviously, you've got to get them checked by a vet yeah, if you're sure. not too sure, but, yes, but sure. what can we look for? Well, you've mentioned one point, which obviously is, is, is a good one, that here you've got a little kitten who's bright-eyed, He's lively, he's moving around, he's curious, he's not over-nervous. In fact, he, he to, to the immediate um, first-hand impression, is nice and healthy. Um, and these little kittens, although in fact they're quieter by nature and probably will be quieter as adults, they are, again, bright-eyed, um, no discharge, no runny nose, um, they're affectionate, there's no ultra-nervousness, even this little one here is starting to play. <laughs> Uh, you can have a quick look in the ears, if you like, and make sure that the ears are clean. And that's quite easy to do with kittens, because the ears are, are pricked up, and you can see that they've got clean ears. So you're looking for bright eyes, no runny eyes or discharging nose, a nice coat, um, a lively nature, uh, and, and you've probably got yourself a healthy kitten. But as you rightly say, to be 100% certain, shortly after getting your kitten, you can go and have it checked from the veterinary surgeon. But we must also we look for these points as well, even if you're buying one from a pet shop. Oh, now, even more important if you go to a pet shop, because here, uh, as in fact with, with our situation, you've got um, a, a litter of kittens who come from where they were born to another place. Now, this means that the risk of getting an infection is always higher. So it's even more important to look for these signs. And perhaps one should say that um, without too much delay, once you've got the kitten home, phone up your vet, make an appointment, and then you can take the kitten along for him to give you a final OK. How, how uh, much should we expect to pay for a moggy? Well, I mean, in terms of value, uh, not very much. I think most people, um, if they are selling a litter of kittens, ask you two, three, four, five pounds, something mm. of that sort. Um, and it's only when you get into the, the field of pedigree cats where you're having to pay a lot more. And then, of course, you're talking about 40, 50, 60 pounds. And if you're looking to go into show cat, showing cats, uh, in some sort of these top cat shows, then you're talking about 100, 200 pounds or so. But for your straight mongrel kitten, not very much. In fact, I know um, a neighbour of mine who had a litter a short while ago, and she, so long as they were going to good homes, was quite happy to give them away. Do kittens need a basket like dogs? Um, not in quite the same way, but it is important that they should have a place to go which they can call their own. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you, in fact, choose to have a basket, uh, whether you use this type, which is covered, or the open type, which is now in, or whether you'd have um, a blanket laid on top of your central heating boiler. But it is important that there is something that the kitten knows is its sleeping quarters, knows it's secure, and knows it's always there. So, yes, you do, but you haven't got to go to the great expense of this type of basket unless you wish to. Right. Shall we get these out of the way? Because yep. you look at his man on this food here. Yeah. It's going to the next important subject. <laughs> Let's put these over here.
Right. So we've got cod liver oil. He's, he's eating it already. Shall we I bring him across? Milk. We got some food. <laughs> you can eat it there. And we got some tins. Now, th this is the. Th what we're now discussing is feeding, because obviously, uh, the most important part of caring for your kitten is feeding. Now, kittens need to have more frequent meals than adults. And at this age, and this is eight weeks old, this little kitten, which is the ideal age to take it on into your, into your house, it needs four meals a day. Now, you can split these up between milk meals and meat meals. Now, here, he's eating a little meat meal, and this, in fact, is chopped up chicken and chopped up uh, uh, red meat, and that's ideal form of meat for a kitten. You can, of course, also give tin meat. No problem. Um, they it's make, more convenient, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is more convenient. It is not necessarily more expensive either. It may appear to be when you buy your tin, but in fact it can work out cheaper unless you have a, a very cheap source of fresh chicken or fresh beef or what have you. In other words, your dad's a butcher or your, or, or your, your mother's yeah. a fishmonger or something like that. Um, but it is important to get this balance of diet. Good meat, and it must be varied if you're buying fresh meat. In other words, no good buying all chicken and having nothing else, or all fish and having nothing else, mix it up, chicken, fish, beef, and you've got yourself a balanced diet. Right. If you don't want to go to all that problem, buy a tin, because yeah. it's all balanced for you. Right. And there's Which nothing wrong with it. And the, co the cod liver oil? Now, we're specifically now, of course, in, into a kitten, and kittens, when they're growing, do need a few extra vitamins, and if you give a half a teaspoonful of cod liver oil in its food once a day, you've given it those extra vitamins which are required for growth, strong legs, strong muscles, etc. It won't put them off eating the food? No, they, see, they like it. Cod, liver, oil. It comes right. from cod. All it comes right. from fish. So th they like it. Now, what you have, though, mentioned is this question of, of taste and taste buds, and, of course, they do vary a little bit. And it may be that your particular cat likes a particular type of cat food or a particular type of fresh meat. Well, so be it, because cats are like us. They yeah. do have varied tastes. And we've got some milk here as well, David. Shall I give it a pour? See if you'd like some. About that? Yes, now what you've poured out there is probably enough, well, a little bit less, you can pour out more Think than that, but that is enough more? for one meal, and you can double that quantity for the whole day. So that about, that's about enough then for that's, the whole day, is it? That, no, that's probably just under. You've poured out just over enough for one meal. But the point I was going to say is that it's not so vital to get the exact quantity. The important thing with feeding is to get the balance. You must have a little bit of milk, you must have some either fresh meat or tin meat, but the meat is the important word. You must add a little cod liver oil, half a teaspoonful a day, and if you've got those three ingredients, milk, meat and cod liver oil, then you've got a jolly good balanced diet. Now, some kittens will want to drink more milk than others and the quantity you've got there will probably be sufficient for one meal for a greedy kitten, mm -hmm. but probably not probably too much for a not so greedy kitten so one could think of that quantity as being one meal should so we worry if they leave any of the food not in milk? the slightest the important thing though is that if meal is left in other words obviously the kitten has had its fill of milk or meat or what have you don't leave it lying about take it away and get rid of it because if you leave it lying around and as you can imagine in the summertime with flies around all sorts of contaminations can take place so Give the, put the food down, let the kitten get used to having a meal time, whether it's 8 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock, whichever way you want to sort out your... And clothes. twice a day? That's four times a day. Four times a because day. Because at 8 o'clock in the morning you're giving a little bit of milk, at 12 o'clock you're giving some meat, at 4 o'clock some more meat, and at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or what have you, another little bit more milk. Now you can obviously sw switch it around. I mean you can give the milk first thing and then you can give meat and then milk and then meat or you can give the meat first thing. That's up to you to sort out. But basically two meat meals, two milk meals. Should you take your kitten then out after, should you allow him to go out after he's had something to drink or eat? Well I believe it's a good idea because it fits in well with uh, actual house training your kitten. Um, one of the things about young kittens and also young puppies is that when they have eaten, they do like to go out and relieve themselves. And obviously, if you don't let them out, they'll have to choose a place inside. Now, to start with, if you want to, you can get a, a dirt tray. This is a small tray with ordinary uh, dirt from the garden, or you can get kitty litter or cat litter, which you can purchase at the pet shop. A very good thing. Now, that, that's an excellent thing, because it starts off when your kitten first comes into the household, it's a strange place, doesn't know where to go. Obviously, you don't want to let it out in the garden to fend for itself. So having a little litter tray in the corner is useful because the kitten is naturally attracted to it 
and you can keep the rest of the kitchen floor clean. But once we get into the stage of having settled in, then your idea, as soon as the meal is eaten, take the kitten outside, the kitten will then get used to using the garden for relieving itself. And so you're beginning to work up towards yeah. a fully house-trained cat. We shouldn't let him go out on his own, though. Oh, no, of course not. I mean, there are other reasons for that, and we can go on to those later, like vaccinations and disease. But obviously, when a kitten is still finding its way around a new home, it should never be left to go out in the garden and then, uh, then left on its own. Certainly, if you want to take it out in the garden and stay with it, that's the way to do it. Well, when will they get used to their own garden and not run away? Well, of course, again, depends on temperament. Some kittens are naturally more curious and more, and they're used to, and they like exploring more than others. Other kittens are a little bit backward and they're a bit nervous. Uh, and so don't force a kitten to go outside. Allow it the opportunity by taking it out after mealtime and perhaps if it's summertime and a nice day and everybody else is out in the garden, bring it out with you. But don't force it to go out until it's ready to go out into the garden and start exploring. And this usually happens when they're about four or five months old. In other words, a little bit older than this age. Right. At this age, uh, they're happy enough indoors playing and doing what they want to do. David, you mentioned vaccination. Is that necessary? Oh, absolutely vital. There are, in fact, two major diseases you vaccinate. One is called feline enteritis, which is a long name, I know, but basically it means a nasty tummy upset, which can be fatal. <laughs> um, and it really is a nasty disease, and, and the only way you can protect your cat is to have it vaccinated. And the other disease, which is very common, is called cat flu, and that's rather like our own flu. We have colds and coughs and temperatures, etc. Um, so, vaccination, yes, it's important. Uh, the age to do it is about 12 weeks old. So when your kitten is about 12 weeks, take it along to your vet and have the vaccine carried out. He will do it for you, he'll do it. It's, it's not a painful injection, it doesn't upset the kitten too much, but it's 100% vital for its good health. Does it need to be repeated later in life? Oh, indeed. You have to have boosters and the vet will advise you because it right. varies depending yeah. on the vaccine. And the other thing which will usefully happen at that time is the vet will also give you advice and, if necessary, supply you with tablets for worming because kittens can get round worms like puppies and obviously you have to treat them. So this can be done at the same time as you visit the vet for the vaccines. So you kill two birds with one stone, as they say. <laughs> uh, David, this is the mother of the lovely kittens we saw earlier. That is right. And as you can see, she's, she's very small <laughs> and she's only a youngster. Very lively. She's only a year old. And uh, in fact, she had a bit of problems rearing the kittens in the first place. And the reason why, of course, she ended up in our care was that she became pregnant when the owner didn't want her to be because the owner had neglected to neuter her. What's... is it essential to neuter them, is it? Well, this is a classic example of what happens when you don't. You have, in fact, a, a litter of kittens which you don't want and you can't care for. And uh, my advice is to all um, owners of new kittens is that about the five to six month uh, of age is the time to phone your vet and make an appointment to neuter the animal. Now, that applies to whether it's a male kitten or a female kitten. In other words, you must neuter them. They make better pets. You don't have this problem with females of, uh, of excessive or, or, or rather unnecessary pregnancies. Uh, and with males, of course, you have a much nicer household pet, uh, a cat who's not inclined to wander, who doesn't spray nasty smells around the house, who doesn't get into fights with other male cats. So there are lots of advantages, not just for you as the owner, but also for the cat as well. So, yes, have your cat neutered, and the best time is around five to six months of age, uh, although you can do it at any time, of course, in its life. And, uh, and this little lady, in fact, will be neutered... <laughs> she's gone. Um, ..before she's uh, given a new home, which is what she has come in for here. <laughs> David, thanks very much indeed. And we'll be meeting you again a little bit later on in the series. And if you'd like any more information on cats, there's this, this smashing RSPCA official pet guide uh, on cats. It's very informative and lots of colour photographs inside. Well, that's it for this week. I'll see you next week on Graham's Ark. Bye.